It was a beautiful day. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and the flowers were in bloom. Miffy thought, this is going to be a nice day. Mother, said Miffy, it's such a lovely day. May I visit Poppy Pig? Yes, Miffy, but it's a long way and your scooter is broken. You'll have to walk. It was a long walk and Miffy was happy when she reached Poppy's house at last. She knew that Poppy always had some nice biscuits to eat. When she knocked on the door, she could almost taste those biscuits. But there was no answer and she looked up and saw a note stuck at the door. Miffy read the note. I'm off to visit my cousin, back next week, it said. Oh well, thought Miffy, what else can I do on this lovely day? She walked all the way back home. I think I'll call Melanie, she said. Miffy went to the telephone and dialed Melanie's number. Melanie's mother answered the phone. Can Melanie come out and play with me? asked Miffy. Oh, I'm sorry, Miffy dear, said Melanie's mother. Melanie is in bed with a cold and cannot go outside to play today. I know, thought Miffy. I'll get my ball and go and play with Snuffy. So Miffy went to her cupboard and took out her big brightly coloured ball. Snuffy loves to chase this ball, said Miffy. She ran as fast as she could to where Snuffy lived. We will have great fun, she thought. But when she got there, Snuffy was lying beside her empty food dish, fast asleep. Miffy could see that Snuffy had just had her dinner. Miffy bounced her ball up and down, up and down. But Snuffy only opened one eye, just a little bit, and then closed it again, and stayed fast asleep. So poor Miffy had to go home again, still with no one to play with on such a beautiful day. I'll just have to play by myself, she thought, but I can still have fun. I'll go and fly my kite. She took out her beautiful kite with the long ribbons. She held onto the string and ran across the meadow. She ran and ran, but the kite just bounced along the ground. There was no wind, no wind at all and the kite could not fly up into the air. Miffy stopped running. This started off as such a nice day, she thought, but everything went wrong. I think I'll just go home. At home, Miffy took one of her favourite books from her shelf. Here is something that never goes wrong, she said, a good book. Miffy smiled as she read the funny story. What fun, she thought. It wasn't such a bad day after all. Every time Miffy passed Poppy Pig's house, she admired the beautiful apple tree in Poppy's front garden. In the autumn, the leaves were golden in colour. In the winter, there were no leaves at all. In the spring, lovely white blossoms covered the entire tree. And in the summer, the tree was full of little green apples. Oh, Poppy, said Miffy one summer day, I would love to taste one of your apples. Not yet, Miffy dear, said Poppy. The apples are still too small green and hard. 
you must wait a while. The next time Miffy walked by Poppy Pig's house, she saw that the apples were larger and were changing their colour, half green and half red. Now may I please taste one of your apples, Poppy? asked Miffy. Not yet, Miffy, said Poppy. The apples must be all bright red before they are ready to eat. As Miffy was very excited, it was difficult for her to wait for things. She was so eager to taste one of those apples. Very soon, all the apples were very big and bright red. But birds like red apples too. Poppy thought, it's time to pick those apples before the birds eat them. That very day, Miffy walked home from school very quickly, hoping that at last Poppy's apples would be ready to eat. She was so excited, thinking about how good they would taste and could hardly wait to get to Poppy's house. And there it was. But look! There were no more apples in the tree. All those wonderful apples were gone. Miffy ran to Poppy's door and knocked. But Poppy was not home. Who could have taken Poppy's apples? Miffy wondered. She looked into Poppy's kitchen window. There were no apples on the table. Just then Poppy arrived. Oh, Poppy, shouted Miffy, someone has taken all the apples from your tree. Now I won't be able to taste even one of them. Poppy said, oh, I was away buying some fresh milk. Wouldn't you like to come in and have a glass of milk with me? Oh, yes, Poppy, said Miffy. But what about your apples? Well, maybe I will have a surprise for you, Miffy dear. And they went inside Poppy's house. As soon as they entered the door, Miffy smelt something very, very good. Something fresh out of the oven. Wouldn't you like to have a big slice of apple pie to go with your milk? And then Poppy opened her oven and brought out a huge pie full of delicious apples. She put the apple pie on the table. It looked wonderful and it smelt delicious. Miffy was very surprised and very happy. At last she had a taste of those wonderful big red apples. Miffy, Melanie and Grunty were invited by Boris and Barbara Bear to a picnic at their home in the forest. The three friends walked very quickly through the woods to get there. They were all very hungry. Soon they were there and they saw Boris making a circle out of some stones on the ground. Barbara was preparing lunch on the picnic table. Hello Miffy, hello Grunty. Hello, Melanie, she called. I'm putting some of the vegetables from our garden into this pot. We will have a wonderful vegetable soup for our lunch. Hello, Miffy. Hello, Grunty. Hello, Melanie, called out Boris. I'm going to cook the soup for our lunch. And you are going to help me cook it. Melanie, you can look in the woods and find some very small sticks to help start the fire. Grunty, will you please fetch some logs from the pile in the back of the house? They will burn hot enough to do the cooking. Then Barbara said, And Miffy, will you please help me slice the carrots and cabbage for the soup? So everyone had a job to do. It was fun, and they all got hungrier and hungrier. 
But when everything was ready, they noticed there was still one very important thing missing. We have forgotten to bring water to boil the vegetables in, said Barbara. So Barbara and Miffy went to get water from the house. Once they had filled the pot, they carried it outside. They placed the big pot full of water and vegetables over the fire. Before long, a delicious smell rose from the cooking pot. And as the soup began to boil, they all noticed an exciting bubbling sound. That bubbling is just like music! shouted Miffy. Yes, said Barbara excited. But it needs some rhythm. And she began to tap the cooking pot with a wooden spoon. It made a ringing bell-like sound. Then Melanie stamped her feet in the same rhythm. And Grunty picked up two sticks and began to click them together. I'll get my banjo said Boris, and he ran to the house. When he came back out, strumming his banjo, Miffy also started to dance. And everyone followed her around the soup. Tapping and clicking and strumming and dancing to the music. It was a real promenade, a real forest orchestra. When they had circled the cooking pot three times, the soup was ready at last. The music and dancing had made them all happy and very hungry. So when Barbara finally passed around their bowls and spoons, they all ate the delicious music soup with extra joy. It never tasted so good. Miffy and Aggie were having great fun in the playground. Look at how they went up and down on the seesaw. They were laughing and going up and down, up and down. Just then, Snuffy came running into the playground as well. She was wagging her tail and barking happily. Look, Miffy, said Aggie. Snuffy would like to have a go on the seesaw too. No, no, said Miffy. Seesaws are not for dogs, Snuffy. You can have fun running around, but you would fall off the seesaw. Miffy and Aggie had finished their game on the seesaw, so they walked over to the merry-go-round. with their feet and the merry-go-round went around and around, faster and faster. Snuffy ran around it, around and around, wagging her tail and barking eagerly. Look, Miffy, said Aggie as they spun around and around. Snuffy wants to be on the merry-go-round too. No, no, said Miffy. The merry-go-round is a lot of fun for us, but you would surely fall off and hurt yourself if you got on it. The merry-go-round is not for dogs, but you can run around it if you like. Soon the merry-go-round slowed down. Miffy and Aggie were a little dizzy. Snuffy still wanted to play, and she was almost able to climb to the top of the slide. But she wasn't able to hold on to the ladder, and she fell on the ground, making a little yelp. Oh dear, said Miffy. Are you hurt, Snuffy? The slide is not really for dogs, you know. You must be more careful in this playground. Let's rest a little, said Aggie. 
So they decided to sit on a bench for a while to eat some of the biscuits that their mothers had packed for them in little paper bags. Here, Snuffy, said Miffy. You can have a biscuit too. Biscuits are good even for little dogs. Miffy and Aggie laughed. They didn't want Snuffy to be sad just because she couldn't join in. So now, please wait quietly, Snuffy dear, while Aggie and I go to play on the slide. Then Miffy climbed up to the top of the slide and slid down, laughing happily. Then Aggie climbed up too and slid down. She also laughed. And while they were laughing, Snuffy ran up and climbed to the top of the slide without falling down. No, no, Snuffy, called out Miffy. You must be careful, Snuffy. Slides are not for dogs. But then Snuffy did an amazing thing. She sat down and slid right down the slide and landed softly on a pile of sand at the bottom. You did it, cried Aggie. You did it, cried Miffy. You are such a smart little dog, Snuffy. There was a clear blue winter sky. Miffy was sleeping in her warm, cosy bed. When at last the sun began to rise, Miffy was awakened by the sound of a chirping bird just outside her window. What a beautiful song that bird has, thought Miffy. She must be very happy. She can see the beautiful snow-covered meadow. I would like to be out there too. So Miffy quickly got dressed in her warm coat and her warm scarf and went outside in the crisp white snow. The bird was still there, right in Miffy's garden. What a happy bird, thought Miffy again, and she went to get her sledge. She gave her sledge a little push and jumped onto it. It was such a nice feeling to be sliding over the smooth white snow. Miffy still heard the bird cheeping, just as loudly as ever, and when she looked back, she saw that the bird was hopping after her. The little bird loves the snow too, thought Miffy. She's hopping along with me. But now Miffy had to turn her sledge around and pull it back to her house. She hadn't had her breakfast yet. And even as she did that, the little bird also turned around and hopped after her. That little bird must really like me, thought Miffy. She wants to follow me and sing for me wherever I go. Then Miffy's mother called out. Quickly, Miffy, you don't have time to play in the snow before school. Come in and eat your breakfast. When Miffy had finished her breakfast, the little bird was still there, sitting on the windowsill. And as Miffy walked to school, the little bird followed her again, all the way to the school. Do you want to go to school, little bird? asked Miffy. You already know how to sing. Miffy thought it was funny that the little bird followed her everywhere, always singing. Even as she sat in her classroom, the little bird sat outside the window. When it was time for break, all of the children went out to play in the snow. And they were all delighted to see the little bird hopping all around them. Melanie said, I think that little bird is trying to tell us something, Miffy. Yes, said Miffy. She's been chirping and following me all morning. Maybe she is hungry, Miffy, said Melanie. Oh dear, said Miffy. I didn't think of that. The snow has covered the grass and there is nothing outside for a bird to eat. Miffy felt bad. 
Oh, I am silly, she said. I should have known the bird was hungry. She ran inside and brought out the little paper bag with her lunch in it. She took out a nice piece of brown bread and spread some crumbs on top of the snow. The little bird immediately jumped over to the crumbs and ate every one of them. Then she flapped her wings and flew off. The next morning when Miffy woke up, the little bird was there again. This time, Miffy knew just what to do. Miffy's favourite toy was her yellow teddy bear that she always took to bed. One morning she awoke and couldn't find her teddy bear. It wasn't under her blanket where it should be. So she looked under her bed and there it was. You're such a grown-up teddy bear, said Miffy. I think you should have your own bed so you can't fall out. I'll ask my good friend Boris Bear to make a bed for you. We shall go and visit him. So Miffy carried her teddy and together with Snuffy she walked through the forest to Boris's house. Hello Miffy, hello Snuffy, said Boris. I'm always so happy to see you both and I see that you have another friend with you. It's my very own teddy bear and he needs his own bed. Last night he fell out of my bed. It's too big for him. Of course, said Boris. He must have his own bed. I will make one for him in my workshop. Boris then started to make a little bed for Miffy's teddy bear. Miffy helped by handing Boris the tools when he called for them. And even Snuffy helped by fetching the pieces of wood. Soon the little bed was finished. It's a lovely bed, Boris, said Miffy. Thank you very much for making it for my teddy. It had been a lot of work and Miffy was tired. Just then she heard... It was Father Bunny. Barbara had telephoned him and asked him to come and collect Miffy and Snuffy. Look, Father, called Miffy. Here is a lovely bed that Boris made for my teddy. Boris is so clever, said Father Bunny. Did you remember to thank him? Oh, yes said Boris. Miffy thanked me very politely. It was a pleasure to make the little bed for her. Then it was time to ride home in Father Bunny's car. Father carefully put the bed on the back seat of the car and laid Teddy Bear in it. Snuffy jumped next to it and Miffy got into the car as well. They waved goodbye to Boris and Barbara and set off for home. Miffy was very tired after such an exciting day and such hard work. Soon she fell fast asleep, even though the road was very bumpy. When they drove around a corner, the wheels of the car hit a big bump and the teddy bear flew right out of the car. Miffy was asleep and her father was busy driving. He didn't even see that the teddy bear was gone. When they arrived at their house, Snuffy jumped out of the car and ran away. Miffy looked on the back seat and saw that the little bed was empty. Where was her teddy bear? She began to cry. Oh dear, teddy bear is lost in the forest. I'll never see him again. I think it will be very difficult to find your teddy bear in the big forest. And where is Snuffy? She has also gone, said Miffy. Suddenly they heard the sound of barking. They looked back and saw Snuffy come running out of the forest. Look, Miffy, shouted Father happily. Snuffy has found your teddy bear. How happy Miffy was. She patted Snuffy. You are such a good dog. 
I am happy to have you as a faithful friend. One beautiful summer day, Boris Bear was making a circle with some stones. He was building a fire because he wanted to surprise Barbara with a nice picnic on the hill. When the stones were ready, he went into the forest to find some wood to burn in the fire. At the same time, at Poppy's place, Poppy was saying to her niece Grunty, This is such a lovely day. Why don't we go to the hill and have a picnic? That's a good idea, said Grunty. Let's bring lots of carrots. Meanwhile, Mother and Father Bunny were having the very same idea. This is such a splendid day, said Miffy's mother. We can all go to the hillside for a picnic. Oh, wonderful, said Miffy. I love picnics. Shall we invite Auntie Alice? Yes, we will, said Father Bunny. And Auntie Alice always makes such delicious cakes and biscuits. So all the friends were getting ready for a picnic but none of them knew that the others were doing the same thing. Boris returned from the forest, his arms full of wood, and placed it all inside the circle of stones. Before I start the fire, I will go and get Barbara, he thought. She will be surprised when I invite her to a picnic. As Boris left, Poppy and Grunty came walking up the hill, looking for a good place to have their picnic. Look! said Grunty. Here is a good place. A fire has already been prepared here. Can we use it? I'm not sure we can use this campfire, Grunty, said Poppy. Someone else has prepared it, not us. But just then she saw Miffy and her parents coming up the hill, carrying a large picnic basket. Look, said Poppy. Even Auntie Alice and Snuffy are here. They must have prepared this campfire. Oh, look, said Mother Bunny. Poppy and Grunty are here too, and they have prepared a perfect place for a fire. May we join you? asked Miffy. Certainly, said Poppy. After all, this is your campfire. No, no, said Father Bunny. It's not ours. Then who made it? asked Poppy. Meanwhile, Boris arrived home. He had secretly prepared a delicious picnic earlier in the morning and he had hidden the picnic basket in his workshop. Now he came back to collect it. Barbara, I have a surprise for you. Nick, come with me. So Boris and Barbara walked up the hill. They heard lots of voices. What a lovely surprise you have made for me, Boris, said Barbara. You've invited all of our friends to have a picnic on this lovely day. Boris just smiled and said, Welcome everybody to our picnic. I will now start the fire. Aha, said Father Bunny. Aha, said Poppy. Aha, said Miffy. It was you, Boris, who prepared the campfire, said Auntie Alice. Be careful when you light the fire. Boris just smiled again. And they all joined together around the blazing fire and enjoyed a wonderful picnic on a wonderful day. Poppy Pig was passing by Miffy's house, pulling a cart, carrying a large Christmas tree in a pot. Good morning, Poppy, said Miffy. Where did you get that beautiful tree? Boris gave it to me, Miffy, said Poppy. Christmas is coming, and I asked him if he could find me a nice tree. What a good idea, thought Miffy. We will also need a Christmas tree. Miffy went inside and asked her mother. May I go into the forest to ask Boris Bear to find us a Christmas tree? Yes, Miffy, but you must be home in time for lunch. 
So off she went, across the meadow and into the forest. When she arrived at Boris and Barbara's house, they were already decorating their own tree for Christmas. Hello, Boris, said Miffy, and a Merry Christmas to you and Barbara. I would like to ask you if you can find a nice Christmas tree for our family. Yes, I can, said Boris. But you know I mustn't cut down a forest tree. I can dig one up for you and then put it in a pot so the tree can stay alive for next year. So they went into the forest and they saw many beautiful trees. Miffy saw one that was especially beautiful. But I think that one is too big to put inside our house. Well, what about that charming little one over there? Oh, that one is too small. All our Christmas tree decorations won't fit on such a tiny tree. Then Boris pointed to a medium-sized tree. Do you think this one will do? he asked. Yes, said Miffy. That's a lovely one. Can you dig that one up for me, please? So Boris dug up the tree, being very careful not to damage its roots. I will bring it to your house tomorrow. Miffy was home just in time for lunch and she told her mother about the lovely tree that Boris was going to bring them. The next evening, Miffy and her mother and her father were busy decorating the tree. It looked so beautiful and even had flashing lights. In the morning, Miffy was on her way to school and little Snuffy was running along with her. When they arrived at the school, there was Boris with a very big tree for the schoolyard. Hello, Miffy, said Boris. This is the tree that you said was too big for your house, but I thought it would be just perfect for your school. The school teacher and all the children were very pleased to have such a wonderful tree for their school. All the children were soon at work making decorations for their new tree. It was going to be so beautiful. Then Boris knocked on the window. I have another surprise for you, Miffy. I also brought the tiny tree. I think it will be perfect for Snuffy. How wonderful, said Miffy. Snuffy's own special Christmas tree to put near her doghouse. All the school children were happy with their big tree. At Christmas, Miffy and her parents were happy with their medium-sized tree. And little Snuffy was very, very happy with her very own tiny tree. One bright summer morning, Miffy was ready to go to school, so she went out to get her scooter. She was very surprised to see that her scooter had turned yellow. That's very strange, thought Miffy. I thought my scooter was red. She walked around the scooter. There was nothing remarkable to see, except for the changed colour. Miffy carefully touched the frame to see whether the yellow colour might have been painted on. But it hadn't. She ran back into the house. Mother, she asked, can a scooter change colour overnight? I don't think so, Miffy, said her mother. But yesterday my scooter was red and today it's yellow, said Miffy. There must be a reason for that, Miffy, said her mother. Best to take the yellow scooter to school now and we will solve the puzzle later. So Miffy went to school on the yellow scooter. She was very puzzled. How could this have happened, she wondered. All day she wondered about what had happened to her red scooter and she couldn't concentrate on her lessons. When class was over, Miffy came out of school with her friend Melody 
and looked at the other children's scooters. There was a blue scooter. There was a green scooter. There was a brown scooter. And there were two yellow scooters. But there was no red scooter. Well, said Miffy, I still have to solve the mystery. Melanie was surprised too. I thought you had a red scooter, Miffy, she said. So did I, said Miffy. But when I woke up this morning, my red scooter had changed into yellow, just like magic. Would you like to ride home with me, Melanie? Maybe you can help me find out what happened. Melanie got on her blue scooter and the two girls rode to Miffy's house. There they saw a bright red scooter right in front of the house. Miffy was surprised. How can I have two scooters? she wondered. Just then Miffy's father came out of the house. Hello girls! I'm glad you came straight home from school. The yellow scooter must be returned to Grunty. Grunty? said Miffy. Yes, your scooter needed new wheels, Miffy. I asked Poppy Pig if we could borrow Grunty's scooter for one day. I took your scooter to Grandfather's workshop. He fixed it this morning. But I promised Poppy to return Grunty's scooter today. So that explains the mystery, said Miffy. Let's go visit Poppy and Grunty to return the yellow scooter and we can bring them some nice fresh carrots from our garden as a present. That's a good idea, said her father. Miffy and Melanie collected a basket full of carrots. While they were collecting carrots, Miffy said to Melanie, Sometimes there is mystery in nature as well, like these green leaves. They are actually orange carrots. They all had to laugh. And then they set off to Poppy's house. One day in school, the teacher said, Today I'm going to show you something special. Let's close the curtains and switch off all the lights. When it was completely dark, the teacher turned on her desk lamp and shone it on the wall. Then she held up a piece of paper that had been cut into the shape of a little girl bunny. Look, said the teacher, when I hold this bunny shape in front of the light, you will see her shadow on the wall. And there it was, a great big shadow, exactly in the shape of a girl bunny. Can you see, said the teacher, when anything or anybody is in front of a light, there will be a shadow. You can try it yourselves when you go out in the sunshine. As Miffy and her friends walked home, it was getting dark and the sun was low in the sky. All the trees cast shadows of their trunks across the ground. Try not to step on the shadows, said Miffy. Let's jump over them and only walk on the sunny parts. What fun it was! The little girl bunnies giggled and laughed as they jumped along, being very careful not to step on the shadows. Miffy was still laughing when she arrived home and waved goodbye to her friends. At the dinner table that evening, she told her mother and father everything she had learned about light and shadows. But now it was night time and the sun had gone. It was time for Miffy to go to bed. After her mother and father kissed her goodnight, Miffy went into her room and changed into her pyjamas. She walked over to her bed and turned off the light. But just then, she saw something move on the wall. 
She turned the light back on, but she couldn't see anything. When she turned it off, there it was again. What's that in my room? thought Miffy. She was a little frightened. She went to her door and called her parents. Mother, father, there's someone in my room. Miffy's mother and father came straight away, but they couldn't see anyone in Miffy's room. Except Miffy. But there is something, said Miffy. Look, when I turn off the light, I can see something moving along my wall. And there it was. Something very big with very long ears. Father Bunny laughed. Mother Bunny laughed too. That's your own shadow, Miffy, said her father. How can it be my shadow, said Miffy. There is no sun and the light is off. But look out the window, Miffy, said her mother. Yes, it was night time and there was no sun. But Miffy could see a full moon shining brightly in the sky. When the moon is very bright, it can also cast shadows, Miffy, said Father Bunny. That was your very own shadow moving on the wall, cast by the light of the full moon. Miffy understood and was happy she had discovered her own shadow. On a bright but very cold winter day, Miffy and Grunty were having fun throwing a ball back and forth in Miffy's garden. Snuffy was there too, running and jumping up, trying to catch the ball herself. Then, when Miffy threw the ball, Snuffy caught it in her mouth. Grunty had to laugh, and Miffy too. But when they wanted to continue to play with the ball, Snuffy did not listen to Miffy. Snuffy, give me the ball, said Miffy. But Snuffy just ran away with it. Then Mother Bunny came out of the house and called. Isn't it too cold for you to be outside, girls? Even the water in this flower pot is frozen. I have made some hot chocolate for you to warm you up again. Come in, girls. So Miffy and Grunty went in and enjoyed the delicious hot chocolate. Snuffy stayed outside, pushing and chasing the ball. Later, when the two girls were playing in Miffy's bedroom, they heard Snuffy barking and barking. And when they looked out of the window, they saw she was covered with snow. Everything was covered with snow. The snow had fallen so quickly that while they were inside playing, the whole world around them had suddenly become white. All excited, they ran to Mother Bunny. Mother! Mother! said Miffy. Can't we go to the lake now? It will be so beautiful there, with the snow on the meadow, and maybe the lake will be frozen. Yes, and we can take the ball too, said Grunty, so Snuffy can play with it. Just then, Father Bunny arrived home and heard what the girls were saying. I will drive you to the lake in the car, and I will test the ice on the lake to see if it is thick enough. So Miffy and Grunty and Snuffy all jumped into the car, and they drove to the lake. Look, said Miffy, the lake is frozen. We should have brought our ice skates. Maybe you can bring them another day, Miffy said Father Bunny. But for now, I'm sure you'll have lots of fun playing with the ball in the snow. Father Bunny tested the ice. If the weather stays cold, the ice will be thick enough to go skating in a few days, he said to the girls. Good, said Grunty. Let's throw the ball so Snuffy can run after it. That was their new game. 
Miffy and Grunty took turns throwing the ball out into the snow. And Snuffy had great fun too, slipping and sliding all over the icy snow, trying to catch the ball. She was having such fun. Then, when Miffy threw the ball again, it rolled away too far and onto the lake. Oh no, said Miffy. Now the ball is on the ice and the ice isn't strong enough yet to carry us. But Snuffy had already gone after the ball. No, Snuffy, the ice isn't strong enough yet, shouted Miffy. This time, Snuffy did stop and listen to Miffy. She turned around and ran back. They were all very relieved. That was very good, Snuffy. In a few days, we will come back and get it for you. One day, Miffy and her friends were playing a game. Aggie was pretending to be ill and was lying in Miffy's bed with a thermometer under her arm. Miffy was the nurse. She pulled out the thermometer, looked at it and gasped. Doctor! Doctor! called Miffy. I think you should come and look at Aggie. Then Dr Melanie came in and lifted Aggie's hand. This could be serious, she said. We must give Aggie some medicine. Oh dear, said Miffy. We have no medicine, Doctor. So Melanie went to the kitchen and called out. Mrs Bunny, do you have some medicine we can give to Aggie? Miffy's mother smiled, but she didn't want to spoil the game. She knew the little bunny girls liked to play Doctor. So she said, well, I do have some excellent sweets. I'm sure they will make Aggie well in no time. And she gave Dr Melanie a bowl full of colourful sweets. Melanie gave Aggie one of the sweets. She then gave one to Nurse Miffy. And of course, she took one for herself. We have to be sure this is good medicine, she said. And then she said very loudly, Aggie is so ill that she will need a lot of this medicine. At that very moment, Father Bunny came home from work. What is that I just heard? He said. Aggie is ill? My goodness! Don't worry, whispered Mother Bunny. The girls are just pretending. They're playing doctor. Father Bunny wanted to join in with the game too. Well, well, he said. I'm glad there is a doctor in our house. I'm not feeling so well myself. Doctor! Doctor! called Mother Bunny. You have another patient here. So Dr Melanie came in and felt Father Bunny's pulse. Hmm, she said. She called out to Miffy. Nurse Miffy, can you bring me my doctor's set? Miffy came in carrying the case. Here it is, Dr Melanie. Then Melanie took out the stethoscope and placed it on Father Bunny's chest. She listened very carefully. Hmm, she said again. What seems to be the matter, Mr Bunny? Well, Father Bunny replied, I'm not feeling so good and my ear is sore. And he rubbed his ear. Right, said Dr Melanie. We will take care of that immediately. She took a bandage out of her set and asked Miffy to climb up onto a chair. Then she handed the bandage to Miffy, who carefully wrapped it around her father's ear. When she had finished, they all laughed because Father Bunny looked so different. Father Bunny was very proud of his beautiful bandage. I think I have just the medicine for all of us, said Mother Bunny. A large tub of ice cream. So Mother Bunny went to the fridge and came back with a tray with five bowls of ice cream. They all enjoyed the ice cream. 
This is the best hospital I can imagine, said Father Bunny. And they all felt much, much better. One morning, Miffy woke up and looked out of her window to find that her garden was completely covered with white snow. She wanted to run out and play in it. First, you must put on some warm clothes, Miffy, said Mother Bunny. So Miffy put on her woolen coat and scarf and ran out into the snow. I think I'll make a snowman, thought Miffy, and she started to roll a ball of snow. Just then, Boris and Barbara Bear skied into Miffy's garden. Good morning, Miffy, said Barbara. Boris and I were out skiing, and we thought you might like to come too. Oh, that would be fun, said Miffy. I got a pair of skis for Christmas, but I haven't tried them yet. Don't worry, said Boris. We will teach you how to ski. Miffy was so excited. She ran into the house and got her skis. Boris held her while she put them on. You look like a proper skier already, said Barbara. Let's start at the easy level, on the flat ground. Oh, look, shouted Miffy happily. I'm really skiing. But then she fell. Don't worry, Miffy, said Barbara. We've been skiing a long time, but we still fall down sometimes. Miffy picked herself up and was soon skiing along nice and smoothly. This is fun, said Miffy. Let's ski up the hill to Auntie Alice's house. Then we can ski downhill on the way home. So they began skiing up the hill, but Miffy kept sliding backwards. Boris helped Miffy and showed her how to point the skis outward so that they could grip the snow. I think I can do it, said Miffy. So she tried and she found that it worked. It was hard work, and by the time they reached Auntie Alice's house, they were out of breath. Auntie Alice heard the swishing of snow and the huffing and puffing outside her house, and she came out to greet them. Hello, mountain skiers, she said. I think you all need a nice cup of hot chocolate. Boris, Barbara and Miffy took off their skis and went inside with Auntie Alice to enjoy some of her wonderful hot chocolate. Thank you, Auntie Alice, said Miffy. Now we are ready for the fun part, skiing down the hill. So they said goodbye to Auntie Alice and put their skis back on. Be very careful skiing downhill, said Boris. You have to learn how to slow down and not go too fast. But Miffy could hardly wait to start and off she went, faster and faster down the hill. It was fun, but also a little scary. She forgot how to slow down, and when she came to a little hill, she flew right up into the air and landed in the snow. Boris and Barbara skied up to her. Miffy said, This morning I wanted to make a snowman. Now I am a snowman myself. They all laughed. Miffy's father was very proud of the family car. He liked to clean it and he loved to go driving in the clean car. It's a dry, sunny day today, he said to Mother Bunny and Miffy, so we can go for a drive and my car won't get muddy. Miffy asked, Where shall we go, father? We could drive out into the countryside and stop by Auntie Alice's house. Perhaps she would like to come with us. Oh yes, it's fun when Auntie Alice comes, said Miffy. And off they went. 
At Auntie Alice's house, Miffy and Father Bunny went out of the car. They saw a note on the door. Father Bunny read it aloud. I'm off to visit Boris and Barbara Bear. Back later. Well, why don't we go to Boris and Barbara's house as well? said Miffy. So they set off into the woods where Boris and Barbara lived. There were many fallen leaves on the way and driving along made them twirl up and settle all over Father Bunny's clean car. Oh well, said Father Bunny as they drove along. It's only a few leaves and they can be easily wiped off. Close to Boris and Barbara's house, they turned a corner and before Father Bunny could see it, the car drove over a pile of thorny bushes. Sssss, went one of the car's tires. Oh dear, said Mother Bunny. One of our tires has been punctured. Who could have put those thorny bushes in the middle of the way? said Father Bunny. We came upon them so suddenly, I had no time to stop. Just then, Boris came running out to them, carrying a rake. Hello, he shouted. I heard the noise and wondered what happened. I'm so glad to see you're safe. I was clearing away all the dead thorn bushes and was just about to rake them out of the way. But I see that I'm too late. Oh well, said Father Bunny. We do have a spare tire in the boot of our car, so it's not a problem. I will help you change the tire. It was hard work and very dirty. And Father Bunny's suit had got all dirty. When the new tire was on the car, Auntie Alice came by. Hello, said Auntie Alice. What are you doing here? We were coming to see you and Barbara, said Miffy. Oh dear, said Auntie Alice. I'm already on my way home. It's a long walk and it will be dark soon. We're late because we had a flat tire, but now we've fixed it. So we will be happy to drive you home, said Father Bunny. Oh, thank you, said Auntie Alice. That is very kind. So off they went with the new tyre and Auntie Alice. It started to rain. And soon the ground became very muddy. By the time they dropped Auntie Alice off and arrived back home, their car was covered in mud. Miffy said to Father Bunny, Father, it was so good that you cleaned your car this morning. And everyone laughed. In the autumn, the leaves began to fall off the trees. One day, Mother Bunny looked out of the window and said, Miffy, would you like to help me clear up the leaves? We can't let them lie on the grass all through the winter. Oh, yes, Mother, said Miffy. Clearing the leaves will be fun. So Mother and Daughter Bunny each took a rake and began to rake up the leaves. Soon all the leaves had been cleared into a large pile. You have worked very hard, Miffy, said Mother Bunny. Come inside and I'll make you a nice cup of hot chocolate. While Miffy and her mother were inside the house, Snuffy came into the garden. She saw the big pile of leaves and thought it was there for her to have fun with. Soon the garden was once again full of leaves. Oh, Snuffy, said Miffy running out. I know you are having fun, but we worked so hard to rake up all those leaves. But of course, Snuffy didn't understand. She just wagged her tail and gave a couple of happy barks. 
then Mother Bunny came out and said, Snuffy, if you sit quietly and wait while Miffy and I rake up all the leaves again, then we will give you a nice bone. So Miffy and her mother once again raked up all the leaves into a big pile. It was even harder work the second time. Now, Snuffy, said Miffy, you were a good dog this time and didn't jump into our pile of leaves. So you deserve your tasty bone and we deserve some lemonade. And they all went inside. Later that day, Miffy was surprised to see that the garden was once again covered with leaves. Oh dear, she thought, now I will have to rake those leaves for the third time. But then she saw that the pile of leaves in the corner of the garden was still there. Where did those leaves come from? she asked her mother. Those are not the same leaves we raked up today, said Mother Bunny. There were still many leaves left on the branches, and now the last of them have fallen. When we rake them up this time, the job will be finished. But Miffy was too tired to do any more raking that day. She went to bed and dreamt all night about millions of leaves blowing in the wind. When she awoke the next morning, she was surprised to find that the garden was completely free of leaves. They had all disappeared. Mother! shouted Miffy with great excitement. The leaves are all gone! What happened to them? There was a strong wind during the night, said her mother. Didn't you hear it? I dreamt about the wind, said Miffy. But I didn't think the dream was real. It was real, said her mother. And this time the wind helped us. It blew all the leaves away. And now that all the leaves have fallen off, we won't have to rake them again this year. Miffy was very, very pleased. Miffy took a bite of a big biscuit. It made a nice crunchy sound. Just then, she heard a scratching sound at the door. When she opened it, there was Snuffy. Said Snuffy, barking happily and wagging her tail. You must have heard my biscuits crunching, said Miffy. I suppose you would like a biscuit too. She gave Snuffy one of her biscuits. Snuffy gobbled it up. But then she suddenly stopped and pricked up her ears. What can you hear now? asked Miffy. Snuffy ran back to the door and began to scratch it. When Miffy opened the door, she saw her father driving home in the car. You could hear father's car from far away, Snuffy, said Miffy. You have very good hearing. After lunch, Snuffy became very excited again. She wanted to go outside. Miffy asked her mother if she could join Snuffy. But don't be too late, said Miffy's mother. So Miffy followed Snuffy. She wanted to know what else Snuffy could hear. Suddenly, Snuffy stopped and pricked up her ears. What can you hear now? asked Miffy. Snuffy barked as if she was saying, listen. Miffy listened carefully and heard a bird cheeping, but she couldn't see it. Can you see the bird, Snuffy? asked Miffy. There it was. A lovely bird flew into the sky. Once again, Snuffy's ears popped up. She was always listening for strange sounds. This must have been a really strange sound because Snuffy became very excited. But Miffy couldn't hear a thing. 
Snuffy began to run to the forest. Perhaps she can hear a frog, wondered Miffy, or a duck on a pond. Snuffy ran further and further, stopping to listen and then running on again each time. It must be something very strange, thought Miffy. She had to run very fast to keep up with Snuffy. Snuffy became more and more excited. What in the world could she be hearing? thought Miffy. She still couldn't hear a thing. It was so quiet in the middle of the woods, but Snuffy ran on and on. At last, Miffy began to hear a strange sound. It must be Boris Bear sawing some wood, she thought. But it wasn't the sound of sawing wood. It was much louder than that. Suddenly they came to an open space in the woods and they saw where the noise was coming from. It was Boris. He was leaning against a tree, fast asleep and snoring. Snuffy began to bark and Boris woke up. Oh dear, said Boris. Hello, Snuffy. Hello, Miffy. I was working all morning in the woods and I must have fallen asleep. Miffy thought that was very funny. Well, Snuffy could hear you all the way from our house, said Miffy. Either your snoring is very loud or Snuffy's hearing is very, very good. One morning, Miffy hurried to school and Snuffy ran along with her because she could smell the delicious sausage that was in Miffy's lunchbox. Miffy was in a hurry because today was art class and she wanted to make a present for Mother's Day. In the classroom, there were all kinds of coloured paper and cloth and Miffy decided to make a pretty box for her mother's necklace. She worked very hard the whole day, cutting pieces of strong blue card. And gluing and folding the pieces together to make a beautiful box. Then she took a bright red paper and cut out a heart shape and pasted it on the lid of the box. On the way home, Miffy stopped and put the blue box inside her lunchbox so her mother wouldn't see it. She wanted it to be a surprise. I will hide the present underneath my bed, she thought, and draw some clues for my mother on many pieces of paper. When Miffy took the blue box out of her lunchbox, she noticed that it smelt a bit like the sausage that she had eaten for her lunch. Snuffy smelt it too and came to see what Miffy was doing. Shh, Miffy whispered. This is a secret present for my mother. Miffy then took her drawing pad and drew a picture on each sheet. First she drew a picture of a bowl and put the picture on her mother's favourite chair. Then she drew a picture of her toy box and placed that picture in the bowl. And finally, she drew a picture of her bed and put that picture in the toy box. Now Mother will have clues to help her find her present, said Miffy. It will be great fun. The next morning, Miffy said, Today it is Mother's Day. It's your special day, Mother. Wouldn't you like to sit in your favourite chair? When Mother saw the picture of the bowl on her chair, she laughed. I know, she said. This is a clue and I must look in the bowl. When she went to the bowl, she saw the picture of the toy box. And when she went to the toy box, she saw a picture of Miffy's bed. So then she looked under Miffy's bed and Miffy smiled, thinking of how happy her mother would be when she saw the pretty blue box. But 
there was nothing under Miffy's bed. Not even a drawing. Where should I look now? asked Miffy's mother. Just then Snuffy came in, wagging her tail and barking happily. What have you done with the present, Snuffy? asked Miffy. And Snuffy ran to her doghouse in the garden. Mother looked inside the doghouse and there was the box. What a lovely present, cried Miffy's mother happily. How clever you were to make it, Miffy. And how clever you were to hide it in Snuffy's doghouse. I would never have thought to look there. Miffy laughed. It had turned out to be a very special Mother's Day. One day the wind was blowing very hard. And at Boris and Barbara's house, a window had been left open. When Boris came home from working in the forest, he was surprised to find the house full of leaves. Barbara, Barbara, shouted Boris. You forgot to close the window and now the house is full of leaves. But Barbara wasn't home. Where could she be? Just then, Barbara arrived with a basket full of groceries. Hello, Boris, she said. I was in the village shopping for food. But you forgot to close the window. Just look at the house. The wind has blown all of these leaves into our living room. You should have remembered such an important thing. Oh, I'm sorry, Boris, said Barbara. I'll sweep all the leaves outside again. But you shouldn't get too angry, because you also forget things sometimes. I never forget important things, said Boris. He was still rather annoyed with Barbara. I'm going to see Miffy, he said. I remember that I promised to build a shed for her. So he picked up his tools and wood and put everything in his little wagon. Look, he said. I remember to take everything I need so that I can do the job properly. Hmm, said Barbara. She didn't say any more, but continued to sweep the leaves as Boris pulled his wagon down into the forest. When he arrived at Miffy's house, he started to build a little shed, just big enough for Miffy's scooter. It looks really good, said Miffy. Thank you, Boris. And Boris felt very proud that he had done such a good job. Meanwhile, Barbara had finally finished sweeping all the leaves out of the house and she was feeling very tired after so much work. She put the broom back in Boris's workshop in its proper place. And what do you think she saw on Boris's workbench? A lock and key! Just then, Miffy shut the door on her new shed, but it bounced back open again. The door won't stay closed, Boris, said Miffy. Did you forget to put a lock on it? Oh dear, said Boris. At that moment, Barbara appeared in Miffy's garden with something in her hand. It was a door lock. Did you forget this, Boris? asked Barbara. I thought you never forgot anything important. Boris was very embarrassed, but Miffy said, Oh dear, I forgot something important too. 
My mother told me I should make you some nice hot cocoa to say thank you for the new shed. And they all began to laugh. One day, Miffy was very excited because after school, her dance group was going to practice their new dance during Auntie Alice's dancing class. When school had finished, all the members of the dance group met up outside. Along came Winnie, who was very good at dancing on one leg. Then Melanie arrived, who was wonderful at spinning around. But where is Grunty? asked Miffy. She's the best at doing the jumps. Just then they saw Grunty coming, but Grunty was limping, not jumping. Oh dear, said Miffy. What happened, Grunty? Why are you limping? It happened at the playground, said Grunty. I fell off the slide and twisted my ankle. I can hardly walk. Just then, Miffy's mother drove up in the car. Don't worry, Grunty, said Miffy. You don't have to walk. My mother will drive you up the hill to Auntie Alice's house. She knows how to cure sore ankles. Yes, said Miffy's mother. Auntie Alice knows a lot of useful things. So Mother Bunny drove off with Grunty. Miffy, Melanie and Winnie followed on foot. They took a shortcut through the fields. And they all arrived at the same time at Auntie Alice's house on top of the hill. I was wondering where you all were, said Auntie Alice. But when she heard that Grunty had hurt herself, she knew exactly what to do. I'm going to get a cold, wet cloth and wrap it round your ankle, Grunty, said Auntie Alice. That will make the swelling go away. Grunty sat on a chair with her leg raised on a cushion. It didn't hurt but she was very sad that she couldn't dance with her friends. Miffy, Winnie and Melanie practiced their part of the dance, but they were sad too because Grunty couldn't join in. Don't be sad, girls, said Auntie Alice. It's not so bad. I have some special cream for Grunty's ankle and I think she will be ready to dance at the school performance next week. When the night of the school performance arrived, everyone wondered whether Grunty would really be able to do her jumps. The curtains opened and beautiful music began to play. First, Winnie danced out onto the stage and lifted one leg. Bravo! Hooray! Then Melanie came out with her lovely pirouettes and Miffy followed with a beautiful dance like a swan. Everyone waited to see Grunty. Winnie held her breath. Melanie closed her eyes. Miffy made a wish. Then Grunty appeared and made three big jumps across the stage. Everyone cheered. Hooray! 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 Grunty said it didn't hurt at all, thanks to Auntie Alice. Mother Bunny had baked some delicious biscuits. Miffy was bringing some to Boris and Barbara Bear. As she walked through the forest, she saw a bird in a tree. At the bottom of the tree, she noticed that there were one, two, lots of mushrooms. And look, she thought, there are many white clouds up in the sky. She counted. One, two, three. Oh, and there are some beautiful butterflies. 
One, two, three, four. What else can I count? Then Miffy remembered that beyond the wooden bench there would be a few trees left before she reached Boris and Barbara's house. There was the bench. So she started counting. One tree, two trees, three trees, four trees, five trees. And there it was. Hello, Miffy, said Boris. It's so nice to see you. But look at the sky. There are some very dark clouds up there and the wind is getting stronger. I think there is a storm on its way and I should take you home right away. But I brought some of my mother's delicious biscuits for you and Barbara, said Miffy. Don't worry, you can visit us again tomorrow. Then we can all have biscuits and tea. So Boris took Miffy home. Soon the wind began to blow harder. Miffy was glad to be safely back at home. All night Miffy heard the wind blowing round the house. The next morning the wind had died down. But when Miffy looked out of her window, she saw leaves and tree branches scattered on the ground. At tea time, Miffy asked her mother if she could go to visit Boris and Barbara again. Of course, dear, said Mother Bunny, and off Miffy went. She saw that leaves and tree branches had been blown down by the wind in the forest as well. When she reached the bench, she started to count. One tree, two trees, three trees, four, but there were no more trees. The last tree had been blown down during the storm. Miffy was shocked. Boris, Boris, she shouted. She ran to Boris's house. Boris came running out of the house. Look what has happened. But Boris didn't seem surprised by what he saw. Sometimes trees get blown down when there's a big storm, Miffy he said. But come with me. And he took Miffy out to the back of the house. Look, every year I plant some new trees and let them grow a little. And when they're big enough, I plant them in the forest. Can I help you plant a new tree beside the others? asked Miffy. Of course, said Boris. We'll do it right away. There are five trees again, said Miffy. And then it was tea time, and they enjoyed the delicious biscuits. One day, Miffy ran home from school, when suddenly Snuffy ran straight past her and reached the front door first. Snuffy, you are a much faster runner than I am, said Miffy. I could never beat you in a race. As she went inside, Miffy had an idea. We could have a big running race with all of our friends, she said to her mother. You and father can come and watch. Miffy first telephoned her friend, Boris Bear. Boris, she said, I want to organise a race but we shall need some signs which show us the right way to run. Boris said, Well, I'm not very good at running, but I will be happy to make the direction signs. Then Miffy phoned her other friends and told them about the race. When the big day arrived, Boris had all the signs ready. He stuck each sign into the ground to point the way. A blue sign, a yellow sign, a red sign, a green sign, and the last one, a white sign. All the runners lined up at the starting line. 
There was Miffy, Aggie, Melanie, Grunty and Boris too. Barbara held the starting flag up in the air. She shouted, Get ready, go! And she waved the flag. Off they went, all of them running as fast as they could. Who would win? First they all passed the blue sign and Aggie was in front. Boris tried to run fast, but he was not used to running and he soon fell behind the others. Then they passed the yellow sign. Now Grunty was in front. Next was the red sign and suddenly Melanie was ahead. Then they passed the green sign. And look, Miffy was in the lead. Meanwhile, Mother and Father Bunny had arrived, but they parked their car right in front of the white sign. Suddenly, the runners stopped and looked around them. They didn't know which way to run because they couldn't see the last sign. It was hidden behind the car. As they were looking around, very puzzled, Boris caught up, puffing and panting, completely out of breath. But Boris kept on running, across the finish line. And Barbara waved the flag. You're the winner, Boris, she shouted. I'm so proud of you. Then Mother and Father Bunny drove away to congratulate the winner. And as they started driving, all the other runners could suddenly see the last white sign and they began running as fast as they could. Miffy reached the finish line first. But of course, she was a long way behind Boris. How did you find the way to the finish line so fast, Boris? asked Grunty. None of us could see it. Well, I knew where the sign was because I put it there myself, said Boris. But Boris, said Barbara, that is not fair to the others. But I didn't run to win, said Boris. I'm just happy that I was able to finish the race. Miffy is the real winner. Everyone cheered and laughed because the race had been so much fun. One sunny afternoon, Miffy was at the beach with her father. She had been swimming in the sea. She came out of the water and dried herself with her pretty blue towel. Now she wanted to sit down in the sun and read her book. You must be careful of the hot sun, said Father Bunny. If you want to read, then you should lie in the shade. So Miffy found a shady place next to a colourful tent. She read a few pages of her book, but then the owners of the tent folded up the tent and left the beach. Oh dear, thought Miffy. Now I must find another shady place. I know, said Father Bunny. We have a beach umbrella in our car. I will get it. He put the beach umbrella in the sand. Once again, Miffy could sit down in the shade. But after she had read just a few pages, the umbrella suddenly snapped shut. Father Bunny tried very hard to open it again. I forgot to mend the umbrella, Miffy, Father Bunny said. Just then, a large cloud floated across the sky and blocked the sun. Miffy laughed. Now the whole beach is in the shade, she said. But soon the cloud drifted away 
and Miffy was in the hot sun again. There was nothing else to do but cover herself with her pretty blue towel. But there was a strong breeze and the towel blew away. said Miffy. She didn't know what to do next. By this time, the sun was going down. Now there is no problem, father, said Miffy. It will soon get dark. Yes, said Father Bunny. The hot sun is going down, but that also means that it's time to go home. Miffy was sorry that she had to go home, but she laughed at how difficult it was to stay out of the sun at the beach. She climbed into her father's car, and as he drove them home, she fell fast asleep and dreamt of the bright yellow sun. Miffy and Melanie were walking home from school and Melanie said, Miffy, tomorrow is the last day of school before our summer holiday. Shall we make a present for our teacher? Oh yes, said Miffy. I will ask my mother to give me a flower pot and I will paint a nice design on it. Good, said Melanie, and I will make some pretty paper flowers to go into your pot. Yes, said Miffy. That way, our present will be from both of us together. So the two little girls went home, each to make their part of the present. Miffy painted a lovely heart on her flower pot and Melanie made some beautiful paper flowers. The next day, the two girls walked to school with each of their presents wrapped in gift paper. When the school class started, the teacher said, Dear children, today is the last day of school before our summer holiday, so this will be a special day. Miffy and Melanie raised their hands. We would like to give you a present, said Miffy. Melanie and I have made something special just for you. Oh, how nice of you, said the teacher. What a wonderful surprise. First, Miffy gave the teacher her present. The teacher unwrapped it very carefully. What a lovely flower pot, Miffy. Did you paint it yourself? Then Melanie came forward and gave her present to the teacher. When the teacher unwrapped it, she said, How thoughtful! Lovely flowers to go into a lovely flower pot. She was very pleased and thanked both girls. Now, said the teacher, it's time for us to all go out and have fun in the playground. So all the children had lots of fun on their last day of school. Miffy and Melanie played on the seesaw and while they were going up and down, Melanie pointed to the schoolroom window, which was lined with real flowers in real flower pots. At the 
end of each school year, each of us has to take home one of the real flower pots and take care of it until school starts again, said Melanie. I wonder which of the pots we shall get, said Miffy. When they all returned to the classroom, the teacher said, And now, children, I will give you each one of the flower pots to take home. And she began to hand each pupil one of the flower pots. When Melanie and Miffy left the classroom, they looked back and saw the teacher putting the pot with paper flowers in the windowsill. Because our flowers aren't real, they could stay in the classroom all summer, said Miffy. Now everyone has some lovely bright flowers, even the classroom. Miffy loved the sea. She liked to sail on it and she liked to sit on a beach and watch the sea. She could play with her ball, build a sandcastle and fly her kite. One day, Miffy's mother asked Miffy where she would like to have a summer picnic. By the sea, Miffy answered. What a nice idea, said Mother Bunny. We'll have our picnic at the beach. We can spread a large blanket on the sand and put up our special beach umbrella so that we won't get sunburnt, she said. Yes, said Miffy. And I hope my friends will be there too, so we can all play together. On the day of the picnic, it was sunny and warm. A perfect blue sky day. Miffy's mother prepared a lovely salad of carrots and cabbage and green and red peppers. It looked so delicious. She also made two bottles of carrot and parsley juice. Miffy's father said, I will get the car ready and you can put everything in the boot. saw that Boris and Barbara Bear were also at the beach. And look, Auntie Alice and Aggie were there too. Boris and Barbara had a basket full of freshly picked blueberries from the woods. Auntie Alice had a large box of her home-baked biscuits and chocolate cake. She said, why don't we join our picnics together? What a good idea! said Father Bunny. Let's spread this blanket out for all that wonderful food. How good it tasted. They ate everything. When they had finished, Auntie Alice said, before we play a game, let's all sing a happy summer song. Aggie began to play her accordion. As she played, the sound of the waves grew louder, so Aggie began to play louder as well. And while everyone was singing and Aggie was playing, no one noticed that the sea was coming closer and closer. First, the waves caught Miffy's bucket. It floated away. And then, before anyone realised, the sea had reached the towels. Oh dear, shouted Mother Bunny in surprise. Everything will get wet. Auntie Alice quickly moved the towels away from the water. I'm glad we finished all our food said Mother Bunny. Everyone laughed. 
We still had a wonderful picnic, said Miffy. Now, let's play. Where is my school bag, Mother? asked Miffy one morning. Your school bag is just where you left it, Miffy, said her mother. But I have searched everywhere, said Miffy. I'll help you, said her mother. Let's search your room. No wonder you can't find your bag. Your room is a mess. You've left all your clothes and toys scattered around. But when you come home from school today, I'll help you tidy up your room. Here is your school bag, Miffy. Meanwhile, there was something happening at Boris and Barbara's house. Boris was shouting, Barbara, where is my hammer? Your hammer must be just where you left it, Boris. But I have searched everywhere, said Boris. I'll help you find your hammer, said Barbara. When Barbara looked into Boris's workshop, she was shocked. No wonder you can't find anything. Your workshop is a mess. It was true. I'm sure that if you tidy up your workshop, you will find your hammer, said Barbara. Don't forget, you promised to make some new tables for the school today. Boris began to tidy up. And soon found his hammer. He packed his hammer along with his saw and two little boxes with nails and screws. He also packed several wooden boards. It was all very neat. Now he knew just where to find each tool he would need. So he started to walk to the school. When he arrived, the teacher said, Someone has borrowed two of our tables and didn't return them. And now no one can find them. I'm happy to help, said Boris. Miffy said to Boris, I couldn't find my school bag this morning because my room was untidy. It's wonderful how you can find everything you need so quickly. You know, Miffy, I had the same problem. I couldn't find my hammer this morning because my workshop was so messy. Just then, Aggie and Winnie came in. We borrowed some tables last week. Goodness, said their teacher. Boris has just built us two tables to replace the ones that you forgot. Boris looked at Miffy and winked. You see, Miffy, he said, how important it is to have everything in the right place. Miffy loved to look out of her window and watch birds flying over the meadows and butterflies flying over the flowers. How wonderful it would be to fly, said Miffy. I wonder if I could fly too. Maybe I can. I've just never tried. I don't have wings like the birds or the butterflies, she thought. But maybe I could fly by flapping my arms. 
So she went outside and ran very fast, flapping her arms as hard as she could. But she just fell down. Miffy was very sad that she couldn't fly. She looked up and saw a brightly coloured kite flying in the sky. At the end of the string was Grunty. Miffy ran up to Grunty and said, Grunty, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could have paper wings and you could fly me like a kite? What a fun idea! said Grunty. So Grunty and Miffy ran to Miffy's house to ask for some paper. Miffy's mother just smiled and asked Miffy, why do you want to fly? Bunnies don't usually fly. But it would be wonderful to be able to fly and float. Birds and the butterflies are so lucky that they can fly. Yes, they are lucky. And maybe you are lucky to be a bunny. Miffy's mother gave Grunty and Miffy some paper. They cut out large pieces of paper and glued them to a frame made of sticks and made a large kite. They went outside to see if it worked. tied Miffy to the kite, and Grunty pulled and pulled on the string. No matter how hard they tried, the kite could not lift Miffy off the ground. Miffy was fed up with it and very disappointed. She gave up and went into her bedroom. Then Grunty had a good idea. She asked Miffy's mother if she had some large crayons. Grunty took the crayons and began to make a drawing on the kite. When Miffy looked out of her window again, what did she see? There was the kite flying high in the air and on the kite was a drawing of Miffy. Look, Miffy, said Mother Bunny. You are flying at last. Miffy had to laugh. One morning, when Miffy awoke, she saw that her teddy bear was sick. His arm was dangling by a thread. Oh dear, said Miffy. You're looking very bad, little teddy. I'll have to take you to the doctor. Is there a doctor for teddy bears? she asked. Well, said Mother Bunny, the very best toy doctor is your own Auntie Alice. So straight after breakfast, Miffy carefully wrapped her sick teddy bear in a napkin and placed him in her scooter basket in order to bring him to Auntie Alice. She rode as fast as she could up the hill to her auntie's house. Will you please look at my teddy bear? asked Miffy. Mother said you're the very best toy doctor. Well, said Auntie Alice, come in Miffy dear and let me examine the patient. 
Auntie Alice placed Miffy's teddy bear on the table and carefully removed the napkin. Oh dear, said Auntie Alice. This is a more serious condition than I thought. Look, even the stuffing is coming out of his body. You've come just in time. Oh, can you help him? asked Miffy anxiously. I think I can, said Auntie Alice, but he will have to stay in my hospital for one night so that I know he is well again. Miffy was very sad to be without her teddy for even one night. But she had to go home. Back home she felt very sad. She could hardly eat her dinner. I don't think I can sleep very well without my teddy bear, she said. Well, Miffy, said her mother, I will telephone Auntie Alice and ask her if you can stay with her tonight so you can be close to your teddy. I've already sewn Miffy's teddy together, so if she comes back here to sleep, I'll put him in her bed as a surprise for her when she wakes in the morning. So father drove Miffy to Auntie Alice to stay for the night. As soon as Miffy was asleep, Auntie Alice carefully tucked the repaired teddy bear under Miffy's blanket. When Miffy awoke in the morning, she saw right away that her teddy was healthy again. Oh, Auntie Alice, it's true, she shouted. You are really the best toy doctor that ever was. Thank you, dear, said Auntie Alice proudly. And Miffy was very happy that her teddy bear was well again. One day, Miffy and her friends were playing with a ball. Let's see who can throw a ball the highest, said Miffy. And she threw her ball. Then it was Melanie's turn. It went even higher. Then Aggie tried. Not quite so high. Just then Poppy Pig came by. Hello, girls, said Poppy. I'm very good at throwing balls. May I try? OK, said the girl bunnies. Aggie said, But I don't think you can throw the ball higher than we can. Poppy threw the ball. Up it went, but it did not come down. What happened? said Poppy. Did you see how high I threw the ball? Where is it? The bunny girls laughed. The ball is in the tree, said Melanie. You threw the ball high enough for it to get stuck in the tree. Luckily, the wind blew the ball out of the tree. OK. Let's see how far I can throw the ball this time. The ball sailed away and splashed into the pond. Oh dear, said Poppy. I have lost your ball and I can't swim. But just then, Miffy's father came along. Don't worry, he said. I will get your ball out of the pond and then we can have a game to see who can kick the ball the furthest. 
Father Bunny got in a boat and rowed out to the middle of the pond and took the ball out of the water. Aggie, let's see how far you can kick the ball, said Father Bunny. Then Melanie tried. All right, said Father Bunny. That was very good. And now it's Miffy's turn. Now, young bunny girls, said Father Bunny, I will show you how to really kick a ball. Poppy Pig was glad that she didn't have to kick the ball, but she watched Father Bunny to see how a ball should really be kicked. The ball sailed away straight towards Miffy's house. Dinner is ready, called Mother Bunny. Aggie, Melanie, Poppy and Miffy gasped. Father Bunny was very sorry about what he'd done, and he was worried that Mother Bunny would be very angry with him. But Mother Bunny just laughed and said, well, at least the ball is in time for dinner. Now let's see who can run the fastest to the table. 